Hi guys, this is Bob in southern Indiana and it's uh, early January 2014 and we thought uh, after we got done today moving some junk around because of some little bit of water that we got in the basement there's some of the stacked HW101 chassis that we had stashed under a table that got a little wet we got to looking around and thinking and uh, thought we'd pull something off the shelf and, uh, and kind of take a look at it, put it up on the bench and maybe do something with it and as you can see, the bench is kind of messy, but uh, that's sometimes how it gets, that's how you have fun, right? So we went ahead and uh, pulled up a little uh, CW transmitter, a little tube type transmitter that we built over 10, 12 years ago. Haven't really looked at it for about that period of time. And uh, it's, it's built really, really pretty ugly style, and it's kind of a mess. And we opened up the chassis and took a look and couldn't really begin to remember how this thing used to work <laughs> but we got out some old schematics and uh, started digging and got the got the scope set up on the bench and fired up and got a little uh, power supply out and kind of went over things and uh, and so that's where we're at we fired this guy up and it actually still works uh, we don't have any crystal socket on there I used to have it uh, set up with a little external VFO I think it was an old Heathkit VF1 VFO and uh, that's disappeared. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to try it with crystals, see what we got, and uh, and uh, remembering how we built this kind of ugly thing up way back. As you can see, I've got it on right now, and it's uh, it's a single tube uh, oscillator, a little exciter. Uh, it's built around a 5763, which is a little beam power pentode. You can see it in there. Can I see that little uh, the glow of those filaments in there on that tube? And uh, as you can see, as I said, it's really ugly construction. We got some parts out of there that we had pulled out of an old HW101, some of the tuning capacitors there and the coil and uh, a lot of other junk box uh, parts in there. And um, it's a little oscillator puts out about 4 or 5 watts on a good day. There's an old HP20 power supply we got up on its side. We're using that to provide uh, 300 volts to the, to the plate of that little tube. And... Uh, also a 6 volt filament supply. Also got our uh, little DDS VFO out. We're going to try and uh, use that to see uh, how that might drive this this old tube type rig. And we got some crystals there, some 40 meter crystals that we're going to try to take a take a look at as well. So we've pulled out some crystals and a little uh, little TR uh, automatic TR switch that we built up and we're still thinking about some options for this little uh, this little single tube transmitter. This is actually, and looking some more at the circuit, this is actually almost a clone of a Amico AC1 uh, little little transmitter uh, back from the 50s. Uh, the only real difference is we're using a 5763 uh, tube, and uh, also we we have external power uh, being supplied right now by that power supply filaments and high voltage. Uh, <clears throat> But we're still trying to decide our best best way we can go with this thing. We thought we'd fire it up and on the air and and check out its performance with uh, with a crystal, and then uh, we're kind of scratching our heads thinking about maybe we ought to be able to uh, configure this for use with it alternately with a with a nice DDS VFO to give us more flexibility. So we're uh, we're thinking about that. So we temporarily got our uh, R4 receiver on. We're going to use that for our receiver, and we got our little. Uh, one tube transmitter over on the bench, and we've also got the scope on as well, so we can look at the output and kind of measure the measure the output, and we'll listen and see how it sounds as well. So we're set up with a 40 meter dipole, and uh, let's go ahead and see if we can hear this. Turn up the receiver a little bit. Around 70, 40. We'll get the TR switch working. See if anybody's busy. QRL, are you busy? Don't hear anything? Let's take a look and see what the. Uh, we'll do a key down here. We'll take a look at the scope. Let's see if we can see uh, what our output's going to be here on the scope. Looks like we got uh, about four about four divisions there and we're on the 10 volt scale so we're at about 40 volts peak to peak let's try tuning in here with the uh, with the output capacitor on the rig I'm 
not bad. We have just a slightest hint of a of a uh, chirp. Not not really, not really anything at all. Running about four watts at uh, 40, 40 volts peak to peak is just about four watts. Actually, sounds pretty good. So here's our uh, AC1 schematic, and uh, as I said, this this little rig rig is very very similar, almost identical circuit to this AC1. As a matter of fact, that's how I had built it back 12 or 14 years ago, however long it's been. And uh, you can see a little crystal. It's a crystal oscillator on the left hand side of the circuit over here. Here's the crystal, and uh, that's what we've got set up now, and that's what we just tested out and into a 40 meter dipole running about uh, 4 watts output. Sounds pretty good, not much chirp at all that I can hear. So it's actually uh, uh, set, set up pretty well. We've got a little uh, plate tuning and antenna loading Pi network output uh, set up with the two uh, capacitors that were borrowed from an old junk HW101. And all, all the other circuit parameters uh, above the rectifier are just about identical. And of course, in our case, we're using an external power supply, and we wouldn't, uh, even if we rebuilt this, we wouldn't use a tube rectifier, I don't believe. We just use uh, solid state diodes in that. Now, we're trying to consider uh, if we wanted to go ahead and uh, use a DDS VFO to drive this, we'd probably need something on the order of 1 to 2 watts in here to get this thing to kick up to 5 to 10 watts output. And uh, a <clears throat> regular DDS VFO, I'm quite sure. Even with uh, one stage of amplification, it's probably not enough. This tube is actually set up in this configuration where the crystal is in the circuit. It's a crystal oscillator. will oscillate at this crystal frequency. And uh, that oscillator circuit is actually uh, on the, in the grid part of the tube. And then the second part of the circuit, which is actually an amplifier, is on the, is on the plate uh, part of the tube. And so what we're going to do when we switch to a DDS VFO, instead of a crystal oscillator on this side, we'll just basically have passed through uh, signal at the frequency that we want uh, right into this guy and it's essentially just going to operate as an amplifier after that. So coming back to our setup here, uh, we're going to change from a crystal. This is all pretty well jury rigged and I'm sure that will, uh, the, stabil the stability of the overall rig would naturally be improved a little bit if we have everything rebuilt with a proper crystal socket under rig and not all this jury rigging, but what we've got now is we've got an attachment here now going right straight into the input uh, to where the crystal uh, socket would be uh, into the rig, and we're going to feed that from the uh, DDS VFO that we can see in the back over here. We're going to set up right around 7 megahertz, which is the low end of 40 meter CW, and uh, so we've added uh, our little uh, trusty uh, 5109 uh, broadband amplifier that we've shown in other videos. We can. So we've got it set up here, we got the DDS VFO and we're going into this uh, 20 dB uh, amplifier that's built into this little blue case back here. And uh, then from there we're coming on around and we're going, to, uh, we're going into the input of the uh, little oscillator. And uh, <clears throat> so we're going to try that out and uh, see what kind of signal we get uh, with that. So another thing that we're going to have to deal with if we decide to use the DDS VFO is, let me go ahead and turn this on. The uh, VFO signal is going to come to the receiver all the time because it's set at the same frequency. So that will be a problem in receive mode unless we fix that. We can hear now, we can hear that VFO. We're sitting right on 7.000.4, uh, right at the very bottom of the 40 meter band. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, key this up and we can probably still hear it. Yep, and I'm looking at the scope over there, and it's actually a real nice looking signal. Let's turn this over so we can see. Looks like a little bit of bleed through from the oscillator showing up, from the VFO showing up on the scope. Uh, even with this unit not keyed, but we're running about uh, 20 volts peak to peak, which is just about one watt. So with our little broadband amplifier included, in our, uh, after our DDS VFO driving the little rig, we got about one watt output, which is not really probably where we want to be. We want to be up around four, five, six, seven, eight watts. 
So one more stage of amplification is going to be needed. Although the signal was nice and clean and I didn't detect any at all uh, indications of any type of chirp. So, and that would make sense because we're not using the oscillator part of the little one two brig. We're driving directly with a nice clean solid DDS VFO signal. So here's what I think we're going to do. We scratched out kind of a quick plan here, a part A and a part B. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean this rig up, get a, get a proper crystal socket installed in it and do some other uh, uh, enhancement and clean up to the basic AC1 uh, transmitter. And uh, we're going to key that with our electronic keyer here, our DDS, uh, or our, uh, our Arduino keyer. And uh, we're also going to key the TR switch at the same time. We'll have a dedicated receiver set up to go along with this transmitter, and that's our classic 4 to 5 watt uh, 40 slash 20 meter rig. Okay, now part B is going to be we really want the flexibility to have uh, a VFO control. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, build up a little uh, amplifier uh, to follow our DDS VFO so that we'll get enough drive to drive this AC1. That's going to be a little broadband uh, 2N5109 amplifier, and you follow that with a little IRF510 amplifier, both running uh, with a 12 volt supply. We should get about 3 watts out at that point. And we can feed that right into the crystal socket here of our AC1 and uh, end up with probably 5 to 10 watts output uh, on the AC1. The keyer in this setup, the keyer will key not only the AC1 itself, but it will also key the, uh, the VFO. And we just have to modify the code <clears throat> a little bit, the existing code in the DDS VFO. It's an Arduino uh, processor. Uh, modify the code to uh, basically kill the output signal unless the key is down. That will get rid of our problem of having that VFO constantly in the receiver so that we actually can't hear anything. Uh, so that will be a little bit of a code rewrite there. It shouldn't be a horrible job. We already have the, uh, the key jacks installed in here to make that work. So I think that uh, that's going to be a decent option for us. And uh, so we'll be able to have a crystal controlled uh, little rig or, uh, or VFO controlled. And uh, so that's what we're shooting for. We'll see how that works out and maybe we'll put together another vi uh, video uh, with a finished product.